Uh, good day, everybody. It's Max here from Dragon Fruit South Africa. Uh, thank you, everybody, for um, for all the support of all the farms and uh, new farmers of Dragon Fruit um, in countries like uh, Turkey and India and um, Greece, Spain, um, and especially our neighboring countries of in Africa, Zambia, uh, Malawi, Mozambique, and uh, Botswana and um, Zimbabwe. Um, it's really doing very well in, in South Africa. Um, I just want to show you guys, I've recently, two weeks ago, I've planted uh, some ruby cuttings. Uh, ruby is absolutely one of my favorite fruits. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful purple color fruit. Um, a very highlight uh, type of vibrant color. And the taste is absolutely fantastic. It's got a bit of a rose, Turkish light flavor, um, nice and sweet, very, very good bricks rating. So it's a delicious fruit to use in anything, um, really from salad up until uh, eating the raw fruit. So it's very popular. And I think for the future, it's still going to be like a very, very popular type of uh, selective fruit. Um, what I've got planted here, um, what I've got planted here, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in a very, very cold zone in Pretoria. Pretoria's got micro zones for people that doesn't know because if you're on the, on the northern side of the Machalisberg, it's a mountain, Machalis Mountain, then you've got quite a very subtropical type of climate. Those guys can grow avos, they can grow lychees. They can grow mangoes, but on the south side of the Michalis mountain, we've got a different type of temperature. Pretty much the same as Johannesburg temperature. And um, yeah, we hit temperatures of minus four, minus five in winter, you know, so we need a bit of protection. Um, I planted these cuttings um, about two weeks ago, and uh, I just want to do a little experiment with this to see what the type of growth in our area is for dragon fruit if grown in a greenhouse and then of course I'm experimenting with a few other varieties in here it's basically just a type of a protection for winter time so I will definitely keep you guys updated with video footage on how the dragon fruit uh, grows um, I've got some stems here that's like just popping out and uh, strangely enough that I've noticed that th that's not really the case when it's grown like outdoors or open open field we've got like a lot of aerial roots coming from the leaves a lot of aerial roots and I think that's something to do with the closed environment. It's much more humid in here. Can you see that leaf as well? It's got like one aerial root. This one has got two. And all of the new shoots has got some aerial roots. And um, I haven't seen it with, I've been growing dragon fruit. It's 2019 in South Africa. I've been growing dragon fruit since 2008. So it's been quite a few years and I've never experienced um, this type of, I've never experienced this type of, um, what do they call it? Um, it never happened before when a new shoots like just develop aerial roots. So I think it's something to do with the humidity inside, the humidity um, inside of the greenhouse uh, because it's getting like a fine misty spray. So I reckon that you know, the leaves really love that type of uh, moisture in the air as well. Um, although, interestingly enough, the ruby is a very adapt adaptive plant to very dry, hot climates. And also a very, very adaptable plant to, um, uh, to wet climates as well. So it's like all-rounder. Uh, there's some aerial shoots, uh, roots as well. Um, it's like an all-rounder type of plant that does very very good in a lot of regions so yeah i will keep you guys posted on the progress of uh, the new planting in the tunnel